Well, hello there, friends. So today, what we're going to be talking about how is how to never, ever, 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 never, ever give up. If this is what you wanted to do as upholstery, you know, or anything else in your life, you know, it could be anything, okay? And not just upholstery, but today we're talking about upholstery. Just, just to never give up. Today, I would like to be able to share with you some of my experiences. Well, when I first started out, you know, doing upholstery, you know, it was kind of like a job. So, you know, I started out when I was really young and it was a job and for me, it was a way to make some money and I didn't think too much about it at the time. You know, about getting better or, you know, being the best or anything like that. You know, I was just doing a job. Just like probably a lot of other people do when they start out a job when they're young. So, I started out with uh, my first job working for my uncle uh, at his upholstery shop. I'd go there after school. And then after that, when I went out on my own several years later and moved to another state... Another city had a young family, and I had bought my first home, and I uh, started working for another company out in in that state, and um, it was a, a more serious job. It was a production job, so it was a really busy upholstery shop and well known in the area. So there was plenty of work there. So. We were doing a lot of convertible tops, a lot of vinyl tops, you know, back in the 70s and 80s. So I was doing a whole bunch of that. And, you know, when you're tied to a job, you kind of feel like you have to be there, right? So, you know, you do your best. Maybe things don't work out or you find another opportunity or something like that. So you move on. So a few years pass. And then I, you know, get interested in old classic cars, you know, so um, that's where my interest was at the time. So I seeked and I found a, a better job, which paid much better, uh, several times better because it was restoring old classic cars and not just any classic cars, but these were like the top of the top, the best of the best. You know, I'm talking Pebble Beach and I'm talking... You know, during, it was during this time I did a car for the uh, Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. So we were doing the Duesenbergs and the Cords and the, the V12 Auburns and the V16 Cadillacs, the V12 Packards. Uh, and some really exciting stuff, you know. But then again, it was still a job. It was paying well. And I was there for a year or two. And, you know... Uh, things you know you want to advance in life right and so even though that could have been a dream job for anybody probably for a lifetime okay I wanted to start improving myself so after this time I thought okay well you know I'm making all this money for this guy even though he's paying me pretty good you know he's keeping like 80% of the profit right yeah he's got his business he's got his overhead all that but you know what? I'm the one that's performing the, the work. And, and so without me, he wasn't making that. So I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go out on my own again. You know, I had before when I was younger gone out on my own. But um, this is another time I decided to go out on my own again. Again. Okay. So I'm out on my own again. And I'm making more money. I'm g gaining my own clients. And I'm starting to build a reputation. So now with my newly built reputation doing old classic cars. I, and some of the clients that I had was like uh, Craig and Nellie Jackson of the Bear Jackson uh, Auto Auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, also, I did about 40 cars in the Clive Custler Automotive Collection in Golden, Colorado. As well as did about 40... Uh, for old Ferraris for Drew Alcazar of the Russo and Steel Auto Auctions in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, geez, I did several cars, old classics for Zach Brinkerhoff. He was an oil billionaire 
at the time he was in his 80s, back in the 1995 era. So anyway, here I am doing some very important cars, of which you can also see on my website at RudolphsUpholstery.com. Okay, you'll see 44 years of my work there. Okay, so here I am, you know, doing my thing. This is my thing, my reputation. You know, people are coming to me, and I'm, I'm doing very well. And then, boom, right? Okay, what happened? Okay, divorce. Okay, a lot of things happen in a divorce. Okay, and one of those things happened. Okay, I had to start all over again. Okay, lost everything. You know, you lose your house. You know, you basically lose your family. You lose every, everything gets thrown into chaos. Okay, so when you have nothing, what do you got to do? You got to make some money somewhere, right? So you, what you do is you probably go out, go out and get a job. Okay, so I go out and I get a job. Uh, and I'm, I'm working a job, making some money again. Okay, you know, meet a new future wife, right? So then you start everything new again. Okay, so I need to say that I repeated that process, okay, uh, several times, okay? I always say that I was successfully married a number of times. Take it for what it is. But anyway, when you have to start over and over and over again, okay, that takes a lot of perseverance, okay, that takes a lot of drive and determination and ambition, okay? So when I say, you know, never give up, okay, you just got to keep on going. So after 27 years of doing auto upholstery, I thought I wanted to do something different. So I took my model aircraft designs with me and I kind of took my hobby to the extreme. I uh, took my designs with me to China and I opened up a Chinese uh, factory where I um, was manufacturing my designs for two years. And in the end, I really lost my butt on that one. So, and I came back with a couple containers with a product and nothing was selling because that was during the, 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 the housing bubble back in 2009. And that's when I returned back from China. And um, I basically came, came back broken homeless uh, because the people that I had left money to before I left, uh, they all took my money during that time. Three different people I really trusted they took my money, okay? Here I am, broken homeless with a new wife, okay? So we, we come into the United States, and, um, you know, right away, though, just like I always knew um, that I wouldn't be in that situation for very long. So within a month, I had my bank account. I had a new apartment uh, and, you know, had my job lined up and everything ready to go again to start over again okay because we're not giving up right so when i came back to a bad economy nothing was selling so i kept thinking to myself well what was i doing before where i was making my most money and then you know get the big light bulb moment right okay it was when i was doing auto upholstery so guess what? We turn another page. Now I go back to what I know best. So what do I do? I get a job. So here I am, I got a job. I'm doing patio furniture now, okay? So my turning point at that time was I did a set of patio furniture for one of their customers and I had to deliver it to their house. So I have several pieces in a moving van. I drive up to their driveway. Okay, I open the door. I start unloading the patio furniture. 
And the young guy, he opens up his side gate and he wants me to put everything in his backyard. So I do, I start carrying the stuff. So I'm, I'm carrying it in and I'm looking at this house. And then I'm looking at his backyard. I'm looking at his swimming pool. I'm looking at his beautiful barbecue, his kids running around, having a great time, him and his wife. And, you know, I thought to myself, uh, that was my life. I had that life before. And here I am, $10 an hour. This is back in about, what was this? Uh, 2008, 2009. It was about 2009, I guess. So, here I am, just like disgusted, okay? I was just so disgusted with myself, making $10 an hour. And I promised myself that day, that was like my low point. I promised myself that day that I would never, ever, ever do that again. And, you know, I, I, I quit that day and I didn't do that anymore. But, you know, even though the guy that was employing me, he owed me $3,000. And, and like I said, this is back in about 2009 uh, dollars, right? So anyway, he uh, just uh, really screwed me over bad. So uh, here I am trying to start again, starting again. So, you know, you're off to a rough start. Okay, and then what else happens? Divorce. Okay, start over again. Oh my gosh. So here I am starting over again. Okay, this time I wasn't seeking a new wife. Okay, um, my next and present wife, who I can say that I've been with now for 12 years, and she has been the longest marriage. She, you know, we beat all of the other marriages. Uh, so, you know, the other ones, they, they, they did last some, some long time. The first one was 12 years. The second one was six years. The next one was five years. And now I'm at 12 years. Okay, so we're, we're sticking together and we're having a good time, right? Right, honey? Anyway, um, so now I have this new relationship um, and starting over again doing upholstery. So here we are, we're, we're starting uh, Rudolph's upholstery again. And, you know, I open up um, some upholstery shops and, you know, getting my clients and, and now I'm doing some pretty nice cars, you know, high end stuff. You know the expensive newer cars and you know having a good time with that and you know we we thought okay well we, we're probably getting to the age now where we should probably start thinking about our retirement so what did we do we up and we moved to another state again so we had to start over again okay we're not giving up right Okay, so that pretty much brings us to today. Okay, where, oh gosh, I got this YouTube channel, right? Um, by the way, I hope you hit that like button, right? Because when you hit that like button, the my videos get shown to more people, which helps me help you. So just hit that like button right now, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyway, back to what I was saying. So here we are, um, you know, established this business in a small town now, okay? Moving from a big city to a small town and talk about scary, um, talk about taking that leap of faith, okay? I'm in a, in a big city of, you know, like 13 million people and I move from that to a town that has like 5,000 people. And I was wondering, okay, is this 5,000 people gonna support me? Uh, am I gonna have enough business? 
But you know what? I didn't really even think about that too much. You know, I just knew that I wanted to move. You know, we're thinking about our retirement, moving to a small town. Uh, so here we are. We, we, we bought a small property uh, that I'm developing, you know, which will actually, in the future, you'll see that um, because that's going to be my new workshop. I'm actually building it under construction right, right now. So we move into the small town. And right away, uh, you know, I put my sign out front because I'm on a highway here, main highway in the small town. And I started getting my customers right away. I was pretty surprised. And, you know, this is a town where either people, they have money or they don't have money. So I, I started getting some of the customers coming in that didn't have any money. You know, they wanted stuff done, but they didn't have money to get it done. It was more of like a wish list for them. But then I discovered, you know, the the people that live near the lake. So I live near Texas' second largest lake, okay? And it's what I call the lake people, okay? Uh, adoringly, I call them the lake people, okay? Not a pejorative. But they're, they, they, those are the people that, you know... I give them a price and they're like surprised that I'm not charging more. Okay, even though traditionally I would have charged a high price for something and thought it was a higher price and maybe some people wouldn't go for the high price, but you know what? The lake people, um, that's where they, they turn into my best customers. So after that, uh, man, I just got so busy, you know, especially doing stuff like uh, the jet ski seats, the boat seats, anything that was marine. So, you know, if you ever thought about how you can even make more money, if you're doing um, upholstery for automotive, um, you'll find that marine and aircraft, you'll make a lot more money than you would with furniture or automotive. Just a tip. I have heard it said that uh, from a lot of people that they didn't really have some big measure of success in their life until they were close to 60 years old, which is where I am right now. So 60 years old, huh? Jeez, where'd all those years go? So, you know, I guess it's true. Um, I, I could say that my greatest success, even though I did all those important cars way back then and I've done special cars and, you know, cars that people had only seen in photographs or magazines or, or, or whatever on the internet, right? And here I am, here I was, I was working on these cars. Okay. Um, I, even back then I didn't really have that success that I feel and the satisfaction that I feel right now now that i'm where i'm at so that's why i say to never ever 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 and never ever give up so just when things are looking at their worst okay like you feel like you hit bottom okay sometimes you have to reinvent yourself okay you can think of something that you know what am i missing or what did i not do but you know what? I guess my secret to you would be to seek the top, okay? Um, like I said before, marine and aircraft make the most money. So why not start there, okay? And why would you start, like I did, doing used car dealers, okay? Where you make half the money for the same amount of work. Okay, then to me then, I thought I was on top of the world because here I am, some young kid doing all these car dealers and, you know, they kept me really busy, but they kept me really stupid, okay? I wish somebody would have told me way back then, start at the top, you know, do the aircraft, do the, the boat and marine uh, before you think about doing upholstery for uh, furniture and automotive.
Okay, so that is my advice to you. Well, till next time, we'll see ya.